Welcome to Selenium Java WebDriver Framework Crash Course. In this lesson, I will explain important concepts in Java programming. Before you write test automation framework using Selenium Java WebDriver, you need to understand important concepts in Java programming. Object-Oriented Programming Concepts Java is an object-oriented programming language. What is an object? An object is a software bundle of related state and behavior. Software objects are often used to model the real-world objects that you find in everyday life. An object can be physical and logical. If you look at the pictures here, this is a race car. For race car, you can define various states and behavior. For example, you can run the race car or you can stop the race car. In terms of the state of the object, it has color, shape, and maximum speed and minimum speed and some other states. So this is a golf player lady. If you define the object, you can define various state, such as the height, gender, weight, and other attributes. For behaviors, you can define the golf player can kick the ball or the golf player can move. And this is a pencil object. You can define its color. and shape and the size. This is a dollar symbol. You can define states such as dollar value and the size of the dollar bill. And you can define dollar conversion as behavior. And this is a school object. In this school object, you can define some physical attributes and some logical attributes. For example, the school has its location and its size. In terms of its logical objects, school has many departments and under departments there are many offices. When you define a school management system, you need to define both the physical and logical state and behaviors of the object. So overall, Java is an object-oriented programming language, so everything is defined as object. When you define a state of an object, 
we call it fielders. And behavior is basically the messages to use. Let's say we develop an application for student management system. And for the student management system, we can define an object for a student. Student has name, gender, class, major. These are the states of the object, or we call it fielders. For behavior or messages, you can define change name, enroll student, job student, change major, change class. In other words, a behavior is basically the action you will use against the object. Define objects in software development. When developing large applications, engineers need to bundle code into individual objects so that the application can be divided into modules. The source code for an object can be written and maintained independently of the source for other objects. This means multiple engineers can work on projects in parallel by dividing the application into modules. Source code can be reused. When an object was already defined, engineers can use the object in other part of the application. In test automation, we will write reusable functions so the function can be used when necessary. Easy to debug and plug in other objects. When any part of the application causes big problems, this part can be updated and change it easily. This is the extension of the application being divided into modules. When we have multiple modules in the application, if any module causes any problem, we just need to update that module so other modules stay intact. can hide internal information and interact only with provided messages. When defining objects in software development, if we have some critical business logic, then we can hide information from outside the world. So these are the important software development method. In Java programming, we define an object as a class. So what is a class? A class is a blueprint or prototype from which objects are created. In Java programming, we define a class that models the state and behavior of a real-world object. Now let's look at the class example. In this example, I defined an object for a student. 
As mentioned in earlier slides, we define state as fields. So the first name, last name, class name, major, gender are the fields or the state of the object student. Now we have few methods or behaviors. We get first name or set first name. We get last name or set last name. We get class name, set class name, get major, set major. So when defining an object with a class, it is best practice to define the state or fields as private. And all other messages should be defined as public. In the later part of this lesson, I will explain how to define a class in Java programming. What is inheritance? Inheritance provides a powerful and natural mechanism for organizing and structuring your software. In Java programming, classes inherit state and behavior from their superclasses. So, in other words, Inherence means you can use one object in another object or inside the definition or of another object. Let's say in this diagram, this is the hierarchy of object inheritance. Let's say we defined an object for the student. In the student management system, we may manage graduate student and under graduate student, we will have master's and doctor's students. And under grad student, we may add pre-undergrad or some lower degree. So that means when we define an object for the student, the name or first name, last name, class, major can be used for other objects. Because every student has a name, major, and class. So that means once we define a student object, we can use the object as a base object and inherit the object in other class definition. So let's look at the inheritance example. So I defined a class graduate student. We use the keyword extends to inherit another object. So public class graduate student extends student. For graduate student, I have added two states. One is research field and the other one is advisor name. So for these messages, get research field, set research field, get advisor name, set advisor name. 
So in the graduate student class, we can access all states or behaviors of the student object. What is an interface? An interface is a contract between a class and the outside world. When a class implements an interface, it promises to provide the behavior published by that interface. In other words, Interface means all the actions we need to apply to the object. Let's say we design a basic calculator. A basic calculator should have few functions such as add two numbers, multiply two numbers, Divide two numbers, subtract two numbers. In order to implement the interface, we need to define another class that implements the interface. So I defined public class calculator implements i calculator here i represents the interface and when defining an interface we just define the method we don't add implementation for the method however the implementation should be in the class that implements the interface so this interface has add two numbers. Now this class calculator should implement the method. So public double add two numbers, double A, double B. Now return A plus B. So this method will return the addition of the two numbers. Using similar steps, I implemented multiply two numbers, divide two numbers, and subtract two numbers. So all the messages or actions defined in the interface should be implemented within the class that implements the interface. On the divide two numbers method, I added some error handling. This method has two parameters, double A and double B. So if B equal, equal zero, then system dot out dot print ln denominator cannot B0. When we divide numbers, we should always check the denominator, make sure it is not 0. Then, if B is not 0, then return A divided by B, then we convert this number into float in order to capture some decimal points. In Java programming, you need to structure your application code with packages. So what is a package? A package is a namespace for organizing classes and interfaces in a logical manner. Placing your code into packages makes large software projects easier to manage. Let's look at this screenshot. 
Under the source code, I created a package name com.seleniummaster.java. Under Java, I added four packages, API package, database package, email package, and example package. And I also have other packages such as log, report, and UI. So in your test automation framework, depending on the functionality of your application, you need to categorize or organize your code into packages. Let's say the API package is used for testing REST API calls. Database packages will contain code that will interact with data. Email package contains content to send email or any email related functionality. And example package contains a quick example used for testing. And log package is used for generating logs. Report package is used for generating reports. UI package will contain page and page object model to interact with web elements using Selenium Java web driver. When using package, your code is well structured and it's very easy to follow. Naming conventions in Java. When programming in Java, you need to follow the best practice in naming conventions. So class name. Class name is should be nouns in mixed case with the first letter of each internal word capitalized. In other words, we can call it camel case. Let's say class student. This is a noun. Class report generator. So R is capital. G is capital. Class page element. Interface name. Interface name is should be capitalized like class. Interface name can be an adjective, otherwise they should be nouns. Let's say interface calculator, interface runnable. In most cases, engineers use I to represent interface. So when an interface is defined, they can use I and the interface name. For example, I calculator, I runnable. Method name. Messages should be verbose. In mixed case, with the first letter lowercase, with the first letter of each internal word capitalized. For example, change name, enroll student, update major. So N is capital, S is capital, M is capital. Variable name. Except for variables, all instance, class, and class constants are mixed case with a lower first letter. Internal words start with capital letters. Let's say we define an integer variable for age, so int age, all lowercase, string, student name, s is lowercase, name is uppercase, Float, account balance, A is lowercase, B is uppercase. So package name. A prefix 
of a unique package name is always written in all lowercase ask letters and should be one of the top level domain names. Let's say for this Selenium Java WebDriver tutorial, I define a package com.seleniummaster.java. As mentioned, should be one of the top level domain names. So com.seleniummaster is the domain name for Selenium Master LLC. Since I'm using Java WebDriver, so I defined com.seleniummaster.java. For sub package, I add another extension com.seleniummaster.java.file. So package name should be written in all lowercase. Constant name. The names of variables declared class constants and of ANSI constants should be all uppercases with words separated by underscores. For example, static final int version ID, static final int max speed. So static final means once we define the constant, its value cannot change. Important notes in Java programming. In Java programming, every statement must end in a semicolon. Forgetting to type a semicolon is a common error. Always use comments in your code so others can understand your code implementation easily. That means when you define a function or when you define a module, you need to write a comment to explain the basic functionality of the module or the function. Always do error handling in your code so your code can deal with runtime errors. In Java programming, you don't memorize libraries. You need to use online help and Java API documentation. The Java library has thousands of classes and messages. It is neither necessary nor useful trying to memorize them. Instead, you should become familiar with using the API or Java docs of libraries and packages. This is very important. Please remember that there is no need to memorize Java libraries. In your job interview, some engineers or recruiters may ask the class name or messages you used. So if you don't remember the class name or messages, you can simply tell them that a professional engineers never memorize libraries. Because professional engineers should be able to look up libraries and messages using Java documentations or APIs available online. 
always implement test messages to test your application. When you write application in Java programming, it is best practice to write unit test for each method that has critical functionality for the application. And your unit test should have good coverage for the application under development.